Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this lunchtime's session on Analyze Bus Open Data Service. This afternoon, we're going to be looking at supporting bus service improvement plans. Uh, I'm Tim Rivet. I run RTIG uh, on a day to day basis, and we are hosting this event on behalf of Department of Transport and their uh, supplier, Ito World, to help you understand how to use the bus open data service uh, analyze functions uh, we are recording this session and we'll make it available to you um, afterwards so you can share it with colleagues or refresh yourselves uh, later um, and um, please do feel free to use the chat as we go um, and we'll do our best to answer your questions so before we get into the ABODS stuff, a bit about RTIG for those of you that haven't come across us before. We're a membership body for people that are interested in public transport technology, everything from uh, real-time displays through to data, uh, CCTV, shelters, everything to do with technology around the public transport sphere. We've got a range of members, everybody from governments through to local authorities, bus operators, consultants and suppliers. Uh, and we uh, set out to try and help people understand how to use public transport technology, how to make best use of it, as well as developing uh, technical standards and best practice guidance and working with industry across the uh, UK and Europe to make sure that what gets implemented here in the UK is fit for purpose. Um, so that's a quick bit about RTIG. Um, we now, you've all come to actually understand more about the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. And so this afternoon we are joined by Ito World and uh, James Dashwood from uh, there is going to uh, talk to us about uh, how to use it for uh, supporting bus service improvement plans. James. Hi, Tim. Thank you very much. Well, actually, sorry to disappoint you, but I'm, I'm not going to talk too much about how ITO can help with BSETs, but I, I am largely going to ask you guys how it currently helps and how it might in the future. So I just thought I'd start um, by kind of outlining it, outlining what we what we'd like. So if I could start with asking um, everyone here to put up your hand if you have been involved either directly or indirectly in submitting a BSIP or, or looking at a BSIP, so involved in BSIPs in some way. Your, your virtual hand, not your real hand, but you can do both if you like. Can we do both? Okay, so if you could do both, yeah, it's a, it counts double. Okay, so it's sort of roughly about half. Um, and that's great, thank you everyone. Um, and I wonder if you could repeat the exercise for anyone that has used ABOD for a part of that um, BSIP submission. So it could be research into punctuality. It could be some other part of it. Okay, about 10. Okay, great. Um, I'd like that to be everyone. And, um, and I don't think that's a, a, a pipe dream and I don't think that's too far away. So um, BSIPs are obviously really important and, it, and it's a mechanism by which people get funded. Um, and but they're, they're quite expensive and quite time consuming. And I, I've I've got various figures um, of how much local authorities are paying consultants to to help with BSIPs and they're, and they're big. And and when you take that over all local authorities and not all local authorities are paying consultants to, to help out with BSIPs, but they are spending a lot of time doing them so that there is a material cost there. Um, and I think a lot of this could and should be done in a far more automated way because the data is is there. Um, it's just that it's not necessarily in the right format or it's not necessarily easy to get out as things stand. And and that's what we want to be able to do. So I, I know that we're not going to be able to help with all of all of 
um, BSEPs. And I was talking to Anthony Hollett earlier today. Anthony, I hope you don't mind me saying, but um, we were saying, well, Anthony was saying actually that there were four mo main parameters for, for BSEPs. Um, first was passenger satisfaction, which we can't really do much with about um, ABOD, at least not, not we don't directly um, sort of measure that. Uh, we also don't measure passenger growth, but what we can help with are, are the last two, which are reliability. Uh, reliability, I think, is one of those words that in the bus industry gets used at different times by different people for slightly different things. Um, my understanding of reliability is that it in in is it different to punctuality, which is obviously how on time buses are. Reliability is more about did they or did they not run when they were scheduled to run. Um, but Able can certainly help with that. And, th and then the last one being journey time. So how long does it take compared to to the schedule for, for the journey to run? And, and we have all the data there. So I'm imagining a time when the data that you need for your BSIP is, is collected and, and probably submitted because if it's going to DFT, it should all be integrated at the click of a button. Um, but really, in order to be able to do that, um, I really need to try and understand exactly what's required from all different stakeholders for a BSIP and exactly what we might be able to help with um, in future. Uh, and this goes also for, for punctuality reports, which I think uh, are again another uh, thing that, that costs a lot of money, take a lot of time and, and the data is there. Um, and, you know, given obviously the, the, the foundation that trust enabled um, is there, which I think we can we can all agree on in, in in some cases it's not in fact probably widely I'm not sure it's it's there is enough trust there for for possibly punctuality reports but but we'll get there and these kind of things and all this kind of legislation um, that currently takes a long time and a lot of collating of data and outsourcing and then sending off could fairly easily um, be done in a, in a far more automated way. So that's the thinking. That's what we'd like to be able to help with. I don't think we're a million miles away, but we we really need to to understand exactly what's required. And I just would love to kind of get a conversation going. And and please feel free to message me um, after this if you'd like to talk um, one on one or, or or with some of some of our other team. But just have a conversation about um, how people are doing BSIPs at the moment how time consuming are they or not? Um, and how do people think that they could be done better, more quickly and more easily? So if anyone's got any anything to add on that, either raise your hand, unmute and ask a question or um, write in the chat. Well, right, I'll, I'll say something then if no one else is. Um, <laughs> Just, just on the, um, you know, on the ABOD and, and the the punctuality data, you know, like we we have like we have systems we've used here, like Victor Ryzen that we've used for sort of like you know 20 years, and over that time refined our operator reports to where they are now. Um, really fine tuning a lot of detail to do with you know whether you whether you're measuring um, you know uh, the, the final stop. Um, you know, if the punctuality there and, and whether, you know, re really down to very intimate levels of detail and, and they are what we tend to use for statutory reporting or working with local authorities on BSIPs and things like that. The reason, the challenge with ABOD at the moment is that it's the transparency on how that really uh, granular stuff is done isn't quite there, I don't think. So people look at our punctuality in ABOD and they go, oh yeah, here's you know, this says 84%, but your internal reporting says 87 and we can't really explain why. Um, so I think as, as operators, you know, that's, that's the initial challenge we have. It's not a million miles off, but on some services, you'll see almost exactly the same. And on others that have, you know, these, the, you know, peculiarities and things that are managed well by VIX um, and probably ticketed to a lesser extent. Um, but simply aren't, don't seem to be covered in, in ABOD because it's, it's just so new and, and uh, you know, whilst it's on the right track, it's probably still a little unrefined. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think all fair points and 
certainly when you uh, when you mentioned transparency, that's certainly been a, an opportunity that has been an, an, an absolute priority. And I think um, I split this this larger opportunity of trust in the data down into a kind of more on the objective data quality, which obviously is some of it is in our hands and some of it isn't. There's there's issues with with AVL data and, and ticketer and, and, and all of that data going through when it's meant to. Then there's the issue of a kind of static data being uploaded on time and, and all, all of those kind of things. So there's the, there's the element of data going into Abled and us only being able to really work work with that. But also there is the element that we can control, and that is the transparency of explaining to everyone exactly what the parameters are, the exact definitions, how we're making these calculations so that no one is ever confused when they get to Abled and they're thinking, well, how do, how do you get to these numbers? There should always be somewhere I can click and, and understand that. I just want to... Um, show you some, some prototypes of, of something we're doing to address that exact issue in the new release. And I think it also bears mentioning this idea of, of definitions, as I said, one around reliability earlier. You know, what, what do we mean when we say reliability? And I think if we can get at least within ABOD and BODS to a standardization of all of these definitions so that we're all singing from the same hymn sheet, it'll make all of our lives a lot easier. I wonder if I could just share my screen, Tim. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. You should be able to. So um, this is our um, help desk or knowledge base user interface. Um, and this is the kind of the question that people want to know the answers to. Um, and this is all customizable by us, but it brings up these sections. Um, and again, obviously, we can edit the copy and it's going to be iterated, but um, there's no copy and timing points. This is just a prototype. but. But again, it just is hopefully something that means that we're all on the same page, that when we talk about earlies, people know exactly where we're getting earlies from um, everywhere you go. And this is just not just in on-time performance, but in feed monitoring um, all over ABOD, there will be uh, help sections and links as to how these numbers are being calculated. Um, so I thought just worth sharing that, that, that this is certainly a massive priority for us, this issue of transparency and how we're calculating, how we're matching. Um, anyone else? There's um, a comment in the chat, James, from Andrew James, which says um, we need the traffic commissioner and operators to perhaps agree a reset benchmark as clearly 95% expectation is not reported on A bonds. Does that mean that we need to be explicit on ABOD saying that 95% is the benchmark or that we need to speak to the uh, OTC and say, look, 95% is unrealistic given what's happening okay, on ABOD? So, so, you know, it's difficult to have this. Uh, my name is Andrew James from Essex, um, local authority, Essex County Council. And, and it's difficult to have this conversation without upsetting somebody, but um, I will try. Mm. Um, you know, the traffic commissioner has set a 95% target of reliability on time punctuality. Okay, yeah. Below that, they can or have the opportunity to enforce measures on operators or local authorities. So when you look at ABODs, there's clearly loads of services that are not meeting that punctuality target. Um, and yeah. I don't want the traffic commissioner climbing all over me or operators. Mm especially now in the very vulnerable situation that we're in. So for us to transfer our data reporting from manual or how we do yeah. it now to ABODs, which I really, really would like to enjoy and use ABODs. And yes, you know, the response I've got from your colleagues is drill down into the journeys. I get that. But you're actually going too far too quick. We can't drill down into the journeys at the moment. If, a, if an operator looks like they're performing at, say, 68%, let's just, just pick a, a figure out of the air, 70%, 80%, that's well below the traffic commissioner's target. And, you know, if, if I'm not saying ABODS is wrong, I'm not saying the operators are wrong, 
that's clearly something needs to be fixed or agreed mm. as, as a benchmark. This is where we are post COVID and this is where we want yeah. to work towards. If, if, yeah. if, you know, if we start reporting, if I start using ABODS and reporting my overall performance at 70% or, or the traffic commissioner, and we know the DVSA are using ABODS to look at operators perform, uh, or as a foot in the door to go and visit operators, clearly we're going to be in trouble. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally see your your argument there, and I, and I think there is no point in setting an unrealistic benchmark if the, if the tool that is being used to do that benchmarking is saying that most people are uh, are, are not where they should be. So uh, I think there's one of two things you can do: you either reduce the benchmark, or you or you look at bumping up the numbers in ABOD, which you know we hope are just reflective of reality. So the, the easiest thing would be for now, anyway. None of that is can... in your gift or mine. No. So, so we're, we're you know we're going to need to have a conversation because you're, you're quite right. You know, if I was in your position and I was looking at the thing that is judging my business. And and very few people are coming up to the to the required standard. Um, it would be frustrating that the standard felt kind of out of reach. Yeah, and we also have you know local targets, punctuality improvement partnerships, and local authorities that that is the standard we're actually held to, which kind of trumps yeah. what the traffic commissioner holds to. And yeah, as you say, it's it's this it's this judgment that is also very public. And, and the yeah. worry that is that like anyone can get their hands on it uh, who was perhaps an, en an enemy of the industry and use it to uh, criticise us quite a lot. Yeah, I mean, just on that point of of sort of worrying about people having access to it, um, it isn't an open. I mean, it is. It does say open in the title, but you you have to be authorised to have access, so you you have to be no. within the industry. I'm not, right. not necessarily, I think I'm not necessarily, okay, so open access is, is one thing, which which I welcome, but, you know, I'm not, if what we're, what I'm saying is, if uh, if the operators in an area are, produce, are performing at 60%, the traffic commissioner should be all over them, you know, like a disease yeah. and, 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 you know, and uh, holding them and the authority to account. And I'm not saying that the BODS is wrong, or that the traffic commissioner, you know, and I'm not inviting the traffic commissioner to come and see me. What we're saying is, you know, some things, something clearly is, is not quite right. Um, and it, whether it's whether it's how we report, whether it's delays that are out of the operator's control, it, it's a conversation that I can't have. It's the traffic commissioner needs to have that with the operators to say, okay, this is where we're at. It's not being afraid of anybody. It's a say, mm. it's a case of, okay, where are we? Where do we want to be? If if yeah. if the operators telling me not they're they're achieving ninety percent and that's correct, that's fine. It, we still need to aim for ninety five. If ABODS is telling me it's seventy percent, okay, that's where it is, and we need to be at ninety five. Yeah. Um, Roger. I just wanted to add, um, relevant to the discussion that um, we're having right now, we've been having some um, talks with um, ABODS, um, that's both ourselves, Kent County Council and New Venture, um, to resolve discrepancies between what ABODS reports in terms of punctuality and what other back-end systems report in terms of punctuality. Um, one of the issues, I'm not au fait with all of them because um, ticket machine back ends are not my forte, but one of them is to do with the size of the geofence, um, which is applied to stops. And the tendency of GPS readings to wander when the bus is stationary. They don't seem to be too bad um, when the bus is actually in motion. But um, I mean, we were shown a trace for, for a bus that had stopped for nine minutes and it wandered dramatically during that time, probably because it was in an urban area. It was picking up reflections off nearby buildings, passing trucks, that sort of thing. And it was all throwing it off. In that yeah. particular case, it wandered by more than 50 meters while mm -hmm. the bus was absolutely stationary. 
which of course showed an early departure. Um, so th this is just one of many issues. You get issues where um, the bus is going to head down a road, turn around at a roundabout, then come back and stop at the stop. Well, it's just passed through the 20 meter geofence for the stop on the way to the roundabout, so it shows us early. So we get all of these punctuality issues, um, which are technical in nature, basically, and difficult to solve. Um, there are ways to do it, but um, with the current technology on BODs, it would need some some work to be done. You would need directional geofencing, that sort of thing. Yeah, thanks, Roger. That's, I mean, that's very apt because that that is something that we're doing a spike investigation into now. So you're quite right, and 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 we do think that this is probably a cause of earlies in some instances. Um, there has been talk of increasing the size of the geofence. So currently, ABOD uses 25 metres. Um, we could increase it to 50, but I don't think it necessarily solves the problem in the case of, and we can't make it 100 metres because, you know, then it's just... That's, it becomes meaningless. Uh, I think it becomes meaningless. So what we're looking at is um, being able to analyse not necessarily the first ping, that is that, that that kind of would trigger the early as a departure from that stop, but 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 have a have a more intelligent way of um, looking at kind of grouped pings and then picking the last one to to, to depart from that stop, which would hopefully reduce the earlies. But as I said, with the, the the developers are still investigating that, and maybe in combination with a slightly increased geofence, um, it, it it will yield results. But certainly we're we're doing a deep dive into. Uh, instances of earlies um, across the board, and and we do think earlies are, are, the, are the are the main issue. And there's just a further um, comment on that, James, from Andrew Morrison, saying um, there's no one size fits all solution, and geofencing is a great example of the refinement done with VIX ticketer over the years. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it is going to take a bit of work and refinement, as you say. It's not a it's not a uh, sort of simple one to fix. Um, but Phil? until we do fix it, until we have something accurate, it's very very um, dangerous, I think, to start putting targets on things. Yeah. Yeah. Phil. OK, should we go to Chris Reeves? Thanks very much. Sorry, I just realised I was on mic. <laughs> oh, Phil, OK, sorry. Okay. Phil, come in and then Chris. OK, um, the uh, I apologise. I've been banging on about this virtually at all the meetings, but I can't think I can say it strong enough. Our investigations, in, particularly into the early running, uh, uh, most of it is caused by just insufficient pings to the server. Um, you can have a bus sat in the bus station that's been sat there for 10 minutes and find that, uh, that just before it left, it hadn't pinged for four minutes, yet it'd been sat there with the, with the engine running and the ticket machine on. And uh, really, if you go to, to make this work properly, you need that ticket machine guaranteed to ping every 30 seconds, if not every 15 seconds, to be honest with you. But I suspect the ticket machine companies will not want to do that without being paid extra to uh, store all that data or transmit all that data. Yeah, I mean, I, I think a good point. And just back to my point about the earlies, um, it's 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 not a high proportion of cases that that, it, that is happening. So, I mean, yes, it, 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 it will affect earlies a bit in some cases, but I don't think it's responsible for the entire um, issue i think it, it's kind of multifaceted this problem there's also one about parameters we hear that vix very often use two minutes early um when when looking at early obviously otc uses one minute so that's a bit more generous there are various things that we're looking into um and yeah of course if we had more pings we the better the information we have enabled the more accurate um the data that we can display um so if we had 
if we had more pings, we could get really granular and, and, and display fantastically meaningful and valuable data. So I, I've actually got a conversation coming up with Ticketer about how we can um, improve things for ABOD, how uh, drivers could possibly get tutorials to better understand how to use the machines to make sure that the operator error isn't a cause for these missed journeys that we're seeing quite a lot of. And, and as I'm sure many of you who've used ABOD will know, there's there's quite a lot of no data, missing data. Um, and the, the less complete the data, the less accurate the, um, the metrics will be at the end of the day. Um, Chris. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was it was just about all the conversation we were having previously with regards to some of the you know the, the limitations, if you like, around the the immaturity of the platform with regards to handling things that other platforms have built up over time. Um, you know, especially when we're talking about things like stop ready eye bearings, headings, things like that. It, it sort of seems unrealistic knowing how. And to be honest, that that's sort of a fundamental of early day on time performance. It seems almost unrealistic to expect this to be used for BSIP production. And dare I say it, with the data in that sort of state, slightly irresponsible for this to be out there as a tool for the DVSA and local authorities to come to operators and use it as a measure of performance. I think I think we probably need to be a bit more open and a bit more honest with, with the organisations who have access to this data about the limitations of it and about some of the quality issues that are known about, because unfortunately we do see uh, discrepancies between you know systems we've used historically internal systems and what's shown in ABOTS. Now I'm not saying we as an operator are perfect, I'm, you know, far from it, but it, it sort of seems this tool has been pushed out there too soon, if that makes sense. It's, it's not refined enough, it's not mature enough, and yet it's already being used as a yardstick to measure operators on. Um, yeah, I mean it's an interesting point. It it also is interesting that that sort of legacy companies are being used as the benchmark of accuracy because primarily that they are the incumbent. So I think it's we've got to be careful when saying because ABOD shows things are different, it's wrong uh, necessarily. And, and we welcome you to to forward examples where you've got one system saying one thing and ABOD saying another, and we'll go away and dig into it and, and have a look. But I think there's a kind of an understandable um, insistence that that old systems are the, the accurate ones and able because it doesn't agree with it is 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 wrong. In some cases, it may well be, but but certainly not in all cases. But but please do forward information that you've got where able is saying one thing, fix or whoever is saying another, and we can compare and see see what's going on because you know that's that's the only way that that we can get better. Yeah, thank you. I don't no, think I, sorry, Chris. No, sorry. I, I, thank you. And I appreciate that. I guess. I guess the concern is is more in relation to things like if we know there are limitations around the way headings and bearings are handled and stop red eye are handled, then I guess the question is: Are the DVSA aware of that, and is every local authority aware of that, or are they taking ABODs as the source of the truth and approaching operators completely ignorant of the fact that there are these limitations in the system? Yeah, I mean, I. I I think that DBSA certainly uh, and DFT and, and and OTC are all on the same page. This is not regarded yet as this is the truth. And um, whether whether any any sort of software system or analytic system, when dealing with with data, which is very often opaque and there's latency and there's pings and that you know there's all sorts of things that mean that it's very difficult ever. To say this is exactly the truth, you know, there, there's always going to be sort of various interpretations. So, DBSA is certainly very aware at the moment that ABOD is used as a guide, and they do not take it as the exact truth. Um, and if that comes one day, great. Uh, I hope that we get to a sort of single source of truth. But I think getting there is immensely difficult because there's various ways of interpreting the data. But I think it, it you know, we we need to be clear that. No one is going to get well. I, I hope not yet. Anyway, certainly, um, sort of punished or penalised because of data that's being reported on ABLE. Because as I said at the beginning, you know there is, uh, and and I'm you know we're going to hold up our hands up here and say there is 
uh, an issue with trust in the data. I think very often the data is correct, at least as far as the, the kind of the parameters that we've been given a concern and the data that we're receiving is concerned. But certainly the trust in the data is not necessarily there and the two, the two are kind of not necessarily the same thing. No, thank you, and appreciate that. And yeah, by the way, don't, you know, please don't misunderstand me. I don't mean to come over as overly critical. I think we, we know, we share the same goal here. As a, as a data manager, I would love to spend less resource time running reports to send on to authorities and just having this information out there. That you know, that that is yeah, the future. Yeah. That's where we want to get to. So, uh, no, I, I think it's more just around making sure that everyone is clear on the limitations, so we know what metric it is that's being applied. Yeah, I, 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 I really think so. I think that. Um, you know, I think it would be crazy to assume that that given its sort of relative infancy, ABOD is is the the single source of truth and is to be the arbiter of whether you're fined or to judge people's careers and businesses on. I think that would be crazy, quite frankly. Um, so it's not it's not happening. But we you know we we want to work towards a place where ABOD is is used as a tool of compliance. Um, there has to be something, but also is a play, is a, is a tool which is genuinely valuable for operators and local authorities, not just seen as a sort of stick to beat people up with. Aaron. Hi, uh, thanks, James. Uh, on the topic of benchmarking, is there a is there validation that's been been done on the on-time performance um, numbers coming out of ABODs? Yeah, I think there has. I think maybe I'll let Lisa talk about this, but but. Yeah, sure. Um, so we have done. Um a lot of kind of testing around this and comparisons with different systems. So I know a couple of people have brought up kind of VIX um, as one of the systems. Um, so some users have sent in examples of where the data differs um, and I'd say probably 80% of the time ABOD has shown correctly um, and it's much more obvious now, especially in the vehicle journeys area, because you can see the GPS ping, so you can actually see why it's worked out a certain time and why it's worked out the delay. Um, but obviously there has been those 20% of the times um, and they've been very unique use cases um, that have come up um, and we found that the system isn't behaving as expected. But on generally kind of 80, 85% of the time, ABOD has marked the stops correctly according to the GPS pings. OK, that's useful. Thank you. I believe there was also some benchmarking, Lisa. Was it with um, TFGM? Yes. Yeah, that's still uh, ongoing uh, at the moment with TFGM and Stagecoach. Yeah. Yeah, and I think ABOD was was the most accurate. So, I mean, this goes back to the point of like, you know, single source of truth being it being a tricky one and people are always going to understandably uh, want want the one that is most favourable to be the one that is true. Um, and we're not saying that ABOD is faultless, certainly not at the moment. There are definitely instances where where it gets it wrong, we get it wrong and we want to know more. Um, and, and, and I think it bears repeating that we're, we're entirely impartial in this, that this this reflect what the, the data that that we're sent and that we're given um, and we know we can make improvements to to the platform and we want to fairly reflect what your businesses and and what your operators are doing in the real world and and there is there is you know there is no other agenda apart from that Um, there's another question in the chat, James, from Steve Duell, which is, does ABOD take only vehicle location data from ticketing systems or are the sources used as there can be differences between GPS systems on vehicles? I have seen vehicles with five separate GPS locators. I mean, a single GPS is not always matching other GPS. Um, and Andrew Morrison's then posted, it's taken from whichever one the operator submits to the portal. Um, Generally, this comes from ticket to Siri feed, but any Siri feed can be provided to the BOD system. So, um, yeah, just to confirm, we pick up everything in ABOD is picked up from BOD. So it depends who the operator decides to use to submit their ADR feed into BOD. 
Um, and Tim, you've just put a comment in the chat saying we need to find out more, find out what more reporting is needed for BSIPs, not just on time performance. Yeah, that's right. So uh, if we're thinking about how ABOS can support on time, uh, in bus service improvement plans, there's the obvious um, on time performance, but what else have people got in their BSIPs that they need? data analytics for to, to help support. I've seen Tim, it's seen at LCC. I've already had a conversation with James. Yeah, we're in terms of our pieces, we're looking at putting in um, some uh, improvements for traffic light priority, bus lanes and the like. So we're looking at using BOS to get the, the benchmarking data as it stands now and then be able to monitor it over the period when we're making the implementation to then evaluate it and sort of show to DFT the value for money that we've actually gained through uh, using the the the, the BSIP money. And yeah, that's our primary source of using ABODs at the moment. Thanks, Ian. Um, Roger's just put a message in the chat saying, um, we've already mentioned several ways in which false positives can be created, i.e. a spurious early departure or late arrival, but I can't think of any ways to generate a false negative, i.e. recording an on-time arrival departure when the vehicle is actually early or late. Are there any? Um, I'm not aware of any, are you, James? No, I'm not. Um, but it's a very good question. We'll have a look into that. And then if not, then surely the system with the most favourable interpretation is the one most likely to be correct. Mm. Um, I'm sure there's there's some sort of Latin word for this type of logic. I, it doesn't it doesn't seem a million miles away. I'm not sure that <laughs> that is entirely true. I mean, possibly. Um, but yeah, I can see your point. Um, Again, if anyone has any examples of, of things that where they feel that their, their other systems are correct and able isn't, we're always welcome to to have a look. And and as Lisa said, you know, most of the time when we do look, uh, it is right. There are obviously, as I said, occasions when we got it wrong. There was an early that fired, and it it it, it wasn't right. Um, you know, uh, but yeah. Um, and then Steve Dules just uh, wrote, reliability is a measurable for passengers under B6. Sorry, Steve, could you just explain reliability for passengers? Is that that the passengers want to understand reliability? Um, yes, in certain cases it is. Um, so I'm Steve Dool from West Sussex uh, LTA, and we have a number of routes that are showing, um, well, we're getting complaints basically, and the customers are sort of saying the bus doesn't show up. And OK, so that, that to me is a reliability issue rather than a punctuality issue. So we've separated punctuality yes. from reliability. And um, quite often the circumstances where a bus route uh, might go past the centre of town and uh, sort of go towards the other side of the town or some other part of the town and then come back again towards the centre of town. Um, yeah, the, there are many instances that would appear from the complaints that we're getting where the bus will go on its longer part of its journey away from the town and, and uh, do that successfully and come back again, but then it won't go through that last little bit of the town. It'll skip that for some reason or other, and it's it's uh, perhaps the they're running late or some other um, reason. Um, the um, RTI signs in the centre of town don't necessarily reflect what the vehicles are doing, unfortunately. So the customers get terribly frustrated by this, and so do I actually. Um, but um, uh, it's it's really a, a buff um, what I call it, it. It should be measurable the number of journeys that are wholly com completed wholly, in the sense that the whole journey was done and the bus went past every stop. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's the bit that I'm looking for at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm not a data type person, but um, I'm looking for something that will tell me how many services are not running their whole uh, length, basically. Um, and um, 
if I can get some sort of measure from ABODs out of that, that would be great. Yeah, so that that's um, certainly something on our roadmap uh, coming in Q3. Um, so another uh, product with Anito is working on this at the moment. I think they've they've termed it missing trips. Um, so clearly, this is this is separate to punctuality. This this sort of reliability of did the bit did the journey run or not, and if not, what was the reason? Is it because um, it did run, but we've got no data? Uh, why do we have no data? It didn't run because it was cancelled and it didn't run because we don't know. Um, so that, you know, there were various elements and, and if it if it did run, did it run to every stop and can we show that it ran to every stop? So there are various kind of variations on this. But yeah, we ideally want to be able to give you some metrics about reliability. So how many of your buses ran? Forget about whether they were on time or not. Just did they show up? Did they stop at every stop? Did they complete their journey? And how many didn't? Yeah, yes, that's, that that's, would be that's yeah. certainly something that that we're working on. And A bond was never well. Maybe it was conceived uh, to do it eventually, but but the primary purpose I think of A bond at the beginning was was punctuality, and it doesn't really work for reliability quite at the moment. The two are, are sort of slightly different. Um, but we are certainly working on adding that as as some metrics that you can look into. Um, Phil, did you have your hand up, Phil? Rick you on does now. Oh, Rick, Rick does. Hi, Rick. Um, maybe this is a, a sort of question that's sort of further down the line when. Um, it, the, this is all being used um, in, in a more serious way where they think we are going to be judged on on the performance that this the, the system is is relaying. Would there, do you think, be um, an area where we could perhaps add notes to a performance um, of, say, a particular service so that if the DVSA are looking at a particular service and we could make notes and say yes we there was a uh, traffic hold up there was an accident we had yeah. bus reliability and that would save a visit or a call and they could see yeah. that and that and that you know i mean i'm not sure i, I think we're probably a way a ways off that but is is that something that could be built in for future a hundred percent this this is exactly the sort of thing and that and, and it comes back to one of the things that we we wanted to kind of harness on this was the the kind of the wisdom of the crowd and the and the wisdom of the operators who who understand their journeys uh, better than anyone and i don't mean in a way that you're kind of marking your own homework but in a way that you could we can uh, ascribe a kind of confidence weighting to the data and and I, I i dread to think how many hours are wasted by the dbsa investigating journeys that they later find out that, that were absolutely fine and yeah. because that it was easily explainable it must be you know, maybe hundreds of thousands across a year. And if we can do that with an ABOD where you can put a note and you can you can sort of show some GPS pings or, or whatever other information would help back that up and ascribe that to a journey. So the DBSA can go in and they look at some outliers and they see, say what's going on and attach to that as some notes and some documentation explaining what happened. That's That sounds like a, an excellent thing to do. Okay, yeah. All right, thanks. Yeah, great idea. Anything else from anyone? Got 15 minutes left. We don't have to take up all of it. Uh, got another one, David. Reliability and punctuality can be massively affected by roadworks. Yeah, locally on major routes, they're often concentrated in school holidays. The OATS system just described would be, I, I think that might be notes um would be great for recording this yeah i mean i think anything which allows people to understand the situation of what's going on in localized areas better and help dbsa and otc have more understanding of of the bus network as a whole i think is important and and it's not it's not possible for any system i don't think like able which is an analytic system and, and that just analyzes data that's fed in to have have that kind of view of the, of the entire of the UK. I mean, maybe in, in future we can overlay roadwork data and traffic data and, and weather data and all sorts of other clever things that would mean that all of this was automated. But for now, this sounds like a a, a great addition and, and, you know, not particularly complicated. 
Um, so yeah, we're, we we know that the reliability and punctuality are very often not the fault of, of bus operators because roads are complex and there's lots of variables that can stop your bus um, being on time. OK, well, if there's nothing else, Tim, would you like to wrap up? Yeah, thank you. Um, oh, oh, we got one more. Road work notifications to go to operators. OK, thanks, Steve. I'll check that out. Um, yeah, it's quite useful uh, one network, but it does mean that the LTA doesn't have to be involved too much. So the um, uh, contractors uh, to the LTA and any other contractors who are digging up the road um, put their jobs on uh, this particular system and uh, the um, output is almost immediately available to the bus operators. It's not saying the bus mm -hmm. operators would look at it every half an hour or something. They may look, only look at it once a day, um, but it would tell them um, about the roadworks that are happening that day, particularly emergency ones. Um, and it also tells them the scheduled ones for the future, saying, all right, in three months time, we might have to change this route because the, the road's going to be dug up for two weeks or something like that. Um, unfortunately, it's not perfect because um, it doesn't um, tell the people who are managing bus stops and um, other things like that. And the, uh, there's a bit of emphasis on the operator to pick up the information uh, of the parts of the route that are affected um, and disperse that information to other players in the whole public transport scene. Um, yeah. So the county council isn't monitoring it from a bus point of view at the moment. I'm looking forward to doing that in the future, but at, at the moment we um, just using this uh, bus reporting module that belongs on one network and it's uh, quite useful for the bus operators. OK, thanks, Steve. I'll get in touch. I, I mean, it, we'd love to be able to show these kind of things on maps, historical roadworks on your mapping that would you know, be able to show you the effect of that on corridors and on your vehicle journeys and that kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah, let's, let's talk to them. Thanks. So uh, to just pick up on Andrew's comment about is there a difference between planned and unplanned roadworks? Certainly the Traffic Commissioner, if if it's a long term planned roadwork, does treat on time performance differently. And there's plenty of um, uh, history that shows that they do take those and regard those differently as uh, yeah, emergency unplanned, <laughs> unplanned roadworks. So, you know, if it's unplanned, then um they realize you can't do too much about it but if it's planned yeah. and it's a long-term set of roadworks if you've not made adjustments to timetables and things like that then they uh you know then, then there's plenty of evidence to say that uh that they do factor that in and uh treat things less favorably yeah that's what i've said i've said that in the chat that the you know the traffic commissioner accepts there's a difference some sometimes there's a a, a uh, a difference in time scale <laughs> between changing a yeah. registration uh, but anyway but the, it is accepted there's a difference yeah 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 in the future for journeys that did not operate will that be joined with reported lost mileage and the reasons indicated if yes, what's the plan for the data to be collected and joined? Also, if tracking percentage per journey will not be 100%, how will that be taken into account? Um, I mean, it's quite early days in this feature, so we've, it's, it's all still to play for. Um, obviously, it won't contribute to your um, on-time performance if we're not um, if we're not recording it, uh, if that if that is what you mean. Um, but yeah, maybe Martin, when when we get to uh, a bit further down the road on on this uh, missing journeys or reliability um, feature, we haven't really got a name for it yet. But maybe um, we could talk then, and and you could be involved in some user testing because obviously um, we want to design it from the ground up in a way that's going to make it useful for you guys. Yeah, absolutely no problem. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. If there's uh, nothing else, then. Um... Or while people are thinking, I will just uh, wrap up. So there's um, been a number of sessions over the last couple of years on Analyze Bus Open Data Service, uh, and there are recordings of those sessions available. Uh, 
a lot of them are more training type based. This is how you use a BODS. Um, this is how you use a particular feature. Um, and so they're available to help you use it. And you know, if you don't know how to, um, for example, uh, understand excess wait time and how the corridors function works and things like that, there's material online. Uh, from the previous sessions and they are all uh, on a special page on the RTIG website for anybody to uh, view. You don't need to be an RTIG member to access those. So hopefully they're helpful. Um, if there's something that you want to or you're trying to do and can't work out how to do it, um, get in contact with uh, Lisa or James and the help desk. Um, and if there's some demand, then we can always run another special webinar on that topic and uh, and have it recorded for posterity for everybody. Uh, if there's nothing else from anybody, uh, I will thank James and Lisa for um, their um, input into this. I'll thank you for your questions and comments and hope you have a good rest of the day. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for watching this RTIG webinar. To find out more about RTIG and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.